2022 uh, City Council meeting or special meeting for the budget. Uh, the clerk will call the roll for attendance. Anderson Burgos. Bartley. Here. Givner. Jordan. Here. Maldonado Velez. McGee. Here. McGivern. Here. Murphy Rumbaletti. Here. Puello. Israel Rivera. <laughs> Jenny Rivera. Tolman. Here. Bacon. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance, allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, to and to the Republic for which it stands, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God, divisible, divisible, divisible liberty, liberty, justice, liberty, justice for all. That background was, God bless America. That background was messing me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, if I could just ask, how many counselors do we have? So. We have a total of 10. So we have four online, six in the chamber, so 10 total. Was my name recorded, by the way, as being present? I added you in. So. All right, thanks. Uh, another one, uh, Councilor Givner just joined, so that's 11. So for housekeeping, a couple things. One, uh, Councillor uh, Jenny Rivera, her name was pulled first. So for voting purposes, if there's a cut and you're voting yay or nay, we'll start with Councillor Rivera. Uh, also, the mayor did bring in pizza. He said, <laughs> he said it's not a bribe. Uh, <laughs> just wants to make sure that you're, you're, you're eating. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's in his office, so if... You know, you're hungry and you want to go over there, uh, the door's open. Uh, for those who are new, for budget purposes, we'll start with page one and just basically go all the way till we get to the end. If you have a cut, raise your hand and just call out the line code, which would be, you know, going to page one, uh, city councilor is 51201, cut it all, cut 4,000, whatever. Do you have to say why you want to? No, but... That way we can just track it properly, and then when we vote on it, at least everyone is on the same, same page as to where we are. So with that, are there any questions as of right now? Yes, Mr. President. Yep, Councilor Anderson Burgos. As much as we can cut, couldn't we also add to the line? Nope, cannot add, you can only cut. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Mm. So, I had never asked it, and I wasn't sure, and I was never told. So, but thank you. That's that's good to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. So, <laughs> you knew that one, right? <laughs> yeah. So, if it's online and you raise your hand and you're on that page, want to make a cut? Remember, can't add. Uh, we'll do our best to make sure we catch it. So with that, um, if people don't mind, I will sit down to kind of go through it slowly. Uh, to Councilor McGivern, I know we did get some information on items three and four. Would you like to take those up first before we go to the budget? Um, three is the MO MOA between the City of Hoyoke and Local 1459, Department of Public Works. Four. I, if I could, Mr. President, um, not, not that I'm the... Uh, Final say here. I'm not sure if our auditor's with us, but my understanding is different than when we were at the um, the last budget hearing that the laborers uh, contract MOU is signed. However, the money is not in the budget, and that there will be a supplemental budget coming for that. If Tanya's online, I certainly would rather hear yep. her say that or the mayor say that. But I'm pretty sure that's the uh, the way it was explained to me. So let's take a motion to suspend the rules to allow department heads to Second. throughout the meeting. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Tanya, are you there? I am here, and, and that's absolutely correct. The, um, the laborers' MOA is not in this particular budget. Okay. So I, I would suggest on the laborers that we just uh, receive it 
and refer it to whenever the supplemental budget comes in, um, if that makes sense. Because usually it would go to the Committee on Finance, but with a supplemental budget, I, I believe, Mr. President, you're, you would do it the same way as tonight. Oh. When it, and it could come in at any time. Well, if, if this is a July 1 increase, it needs to come in by July 1. Yeah. But supplemental budgets can come in any time until we set the tax rate. Yeah, a motion to receive and lay on the table. So motion is a to second. receive and lay uh, number four on the table. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. In item number four, I did uh, take the, uh, <coughs> I, I did call the uh, city solicitor. I tried to get a hold of the, uh, the uh, president of the, um, of the PSA, but we just, we missed our phone calls late today. Um, I did talk to uh, Solicitor Ball. Um, the PSA MOU um, they've been working on diligently is not signed yet. Uh, she she um, wanted everybody to understand it's nothing to do with the money um, for the proposed increases. It's language that just is being worked out on other items that don't have financial impacts. Um, the auditor did, I believe everybody received a copy email-wise. It looked like everybody's email was on it. Did send us a breakdown of those salary increases. These are the increases that going through every budget as we did over the last three three hearings, we had a chance to uh, see what those increases were. There are 20, 20 or 21 members of this collective bargaining unit. So j just for clarification, I said it incorrectly. I said four is to receive land on the table. That really was three, three. on my agenda. That's the uh, local 1459. So just make sure that's corrected on the record. Four is the PSA, which is what Councilman McGivern just spoke about. So we it's don't have right. it. We don't no, have it. We don't have we, it. There's nothing to. There's no action to take because it could not be presented without the signatures. So just motion to receive, Joe. I don't think you can receive anything. It's nothing. It, nothing. it was anticipated it would be ready for tonight, so we put it on the agenda for open meeting laws. But there's nothing presented, so we didn't receive anything. Okay. That's. So I'd say, and unless and I'm not, I don't want to stretch want to table it. Table it. You know, we unless we I'd say table, table, yeah. table. But unless, unless we can receive the auditor's breakdown, but I'm not too sure if what that. Yeah, I just say for four, make a motion to table. So moved. All those Second. in favor. Aye. Aye. All opposed. All right. That brings us back to one, then two, which would be uh, second reading of the. Uh, Fiscal 23 municipal budget and two would be the amendments and final vote. Motion so to take them off the table. Motion to take up one and two as a package off the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? So now to the budget. As I stated earlier, we'll start with page one and our, uh, work our way down from there. If there's any questions, don't hesitate to stop me. <clears throat> so first page. Page one is the city council. Bob Seeger, turn the page. <laughs> going once, going twice. All right, we're moving on. Page two, which is the office of the mayor. Anyone in chambers? Anyone online? Going once. Going twice. You can always go back. Trust me if, if you miss something. <laughs> but I am asking slowly. All right. Uh, page three, Office of the City Auditor. Anyone in the chambers? Anyone online? Nope. All right. Going once. Going twice. All right. Page four, Department of Procurement. No one in chambers, anyone online? All right, page five, Office of Assessment. Anyone online? No. Nope. Off to page six, Office of the Treasurer. No one in the chamber, anyone online? Nope. Off to page seven, Office of the Tax Collector. 
Councillor Gibner. Hi, thank you, Mr. President. Um, for the, <clears throat> the city treasurer budget, um, I had a note about the um, postage because I just wasn't quite understanding all of their postage. Is that a question for them when they're present? Um, so back to page six where Councilor Gibner is, and that's line item 53420. Uh, it's budgeted for 20,000. And you had a question for the department head or? Well, I just see that the, the postage has been slowly becoming less over time. And um, I, yeah, my question is, do they really need that 20 grand or can we dwindle that down a bit? I would like to take off 5,000 of that. Uh, the mayor has his hand up, so motion, uh, we already did the motion to allow, so turn over to the mayor. Is he eating all the pizza? Is that what it is right now? All <laughs> I have to do is unmute, Mr. Mayor. Hey, Counsel. Uh, hey, Counselors. Oh, man, I know. I got the Chief Procurement Officer, and she she, she has the um, some feedback. Okay, great. Hi, Counselors. On the postage for the Treasurer's Office, um, we had two leases previous through the Clerk's Office and my office. Those leases are now off, off each department's, and everything has been rolled into the treasurer. So there's that's why there's an increase. Um, we aren't, you know, we do send out a lot of mail. The treasurer's office is very busy. That includes all of the uh, payroll that needs to get mailed, all of their uh, <coughs> checks, the warrants, plus anything that would be that would have been covered under the clerk's. Per lease and purchasing lease is now rolled over into um i'm going to say the master postage which the treasurer maintains if that helps <clears throat> councilor mcgivern i i would just and the, know and the postage and and also the postage has gone up i want to say we're at 53 or 54 cents um a piece for for standard ups councilor mcgivern um, I would just note that the mayor did cut this uh, to the $20,000. Yeah. In fiscal 2020, the city spent uh, $22,000. In 2021, we spent $23,000. And we're over halfway through this year, we're over the uh, $20,000 mark already. So I, I, I would suggest that it's going to come out in that area, $20,000, low $20,000, regardless of what we do. Yeah, Mr. President, I didn't hear a second anyhow, so I'm not sure why we're debating it. So. Oh, it was a question, more of a question on it. That's oh, all. It wasn't I, a motion I, to cut I yet. Was a, I thought I heard a motion to cut it 5000 Yeah, it was. No, she said, from where well, I heard I it was. She had a question, it. and then she said Thanks she anyway. to it. Yep. Okay. All right. Anyone further? All right. Hearing none, going back to seven, which was the office of the tax collector. All right, off to page eight, Office of the Solicitor. No. No. Moving to nine, Office of Personnel Administration. Off to page 10, which is our computer system. Councillor yep, Jordan. President. Yeah, Councillor Jordan. Yep. Yeah, I have one for this page. Uh, it's object code 53180 uh, re relative to uh, systems hardware and software maintenance. I'd okay. like to have this uh, line item level funded. Um, the fiscal 22 budget was 46,588 after transfers out of the account. It somehow has creeped back up to 65,000. I'd like to make a reduction uh, to reduce it by $18,412. Second. All right, so motion is to cut on page 10, uh, 
System Hardware Software Maintenance 53180. Cut it by $18,412. That was seconded. Anyone further? Councillor Givner. Um, I, well, I just think that's counterintuitive when we're spending $20,000 on postage. It seems like as we come into a digital age, we should be taking better advantage of our systems. And if we need to maintain them, I think that's important. <coughs> I did. Can I? Uh, can I? The, can you? The, Lori? Can the, well, but Mr. President, yep. <laughs> you know, I I don't know, maybe things have changed since I left, but with all due respect to our department heads, I don't think they have floor privileges to start debating the counselors on the merits and demerits. It, it, I mean it's not if, debating. If, it's not debating, and we did make a motion to suspend the rules if there were questions for them. If there were questions for them. Yep. yep. That that's yep. the key operative words. Um the second the second point I will make is um, you know, we should be level funding the budget unless there's a justification to increase it. Um, how people are spending the money, we should take them at that. And the budget, this is what was spent out of this line, and we shouldn't just be artificially growing it without a justification. So, um, therefore, I think we should level fund mm -hmm. it uh, based on what we had for FY22. Uh, I'll have some other suggestions along these lines for some of the other departments. And, uh, you know, that that's pretty much the spirit of, of it. If there's something that comes up more than level funding or there's something unique, then then by all means, we, we should, uh, you know, we could perhaps do it in a supplemental later. Thank you. Councillor Anderson Burgos. Hi, uh, yes, Mr. President, I would like to hear the department head um, justify this line item just because if I if I'm gonna sit here and cut anything I would like to know what we're cutting and when we sure. cut what what's gonna what's gonna happen to their department and how it's gonna affect our, our city yeah yes. please all right so Han before we get there Councilor McGiver thank you mr. president I the code I just heard was was it 53180 53180 yes. thank you and oh. uh, we I mean we had a long talk about this in the uh, during the hearings also in the Finance Committee meeting and right now we're seeing an incredible increase in not not just in the, uh, the the cost for systems hardware and software but for a number of different uh, things that are going on for example the licenses and things that are going up and now that we have to do it anytime if we just change from a, a, a hard drive to a laptop we have to relicense things I know there's I, I think this is a modest increase and in, in for level yeah. service level funding doesn't always mean level service and I think the importance in the IT department is level service so I will not be voting for this cut all right so uh, Councillor Rivera I just have questions as to where the, the the funding would would be allocated to if that's the idea right because um, I, I would assume <laughs> I would assume like in a sense uh, we're probably gonna get new laptops right or new iPads so there's gonna be needed for funding for the maintenance and the software for those um, gadgets themselves. And possibly, I would assume that we're probably gonna get emails that are city emails, so that way everything is streamlined all the way across the board, and that would also cost money and be on, hopefully, within that line item. So if they could, that before I vote on it and say no, I'm not, yes or no, I would kinda wanna hear from the people that are gonna spend the money. All right, so I know Councilor Givner has another question, but first, to the mayor, uh, he did enter, as he stated in the budget hearings, that he did enter into a new contract with a new vendor, so Wally is gone, so obviously some money might be required here, so my question is to the mayor, if he is there, the 65000 is that is required because of, of what changes? So Lori was actually, so Lori can explain this a lot better than I can, but her and I were both at the table navigating this and I'll, I'll just okay. let her if you can. Thank you, counselor. So I just want to flush out an explanation for this particular line item. Um, out of the 65 that has been proposed, what we have tried to do over the last 
few fiscal years is to capture all of the IT related purchases and try to get them in the right IT buckets. Um, out of the 65,000, uh, about 38,000 is committed for our copier lease program. Um, we have a, a, a global lease program with Xerox and CBS that um, is, is citywide um, and we're on a lease for that, for new machines that during COVID that gives us scanning capability, uh, service, we don't have to pay for toner, um, et cetera. So um, in this process, we've identified a, a few other departments that had needs that should have been paid for through the IT budget, but, they're, but they, it, those, those needs were taken out of each department's respective budget. So that's why there is a bump in the, the ask from what was budgeted to what's requested. So out of the 65, if you were to just take out 38, that's already pre-committed to a lease, that leaves the city the difference to cover IT requests that come throughout the year. It could be laptops, it could be screens, it could be replacement parts, hard drives, et cetera. Um, yes, and so with that said, um, I will say that the conditions with the supply chain and the availability of IT equipment, specifically copiers, fax machines, uh, computers, Chromebooks, um, prices are through the roof because of um, the conditions in the market. So while it is an ask, just know that some departments were paying for copier leases under their own departmental budget and we were able to capture that and roll it into this lease line item. So I wanted to just provide an explanation as to the higher number and out of the higher number, almost half of that is, is pre-committed per se. And that leaves the city the difference to cover the IT request for 12 months. And I will say that in my capacity to help the mayor and, and, and everything kind of organize the IT budget, which is um, extremely, you know, it's a very active budget. There's requests that come in fast and furious throughout the year. Um, we've done a good job of pushing back um, to try to, you know, keep our expenses down. Um, but in doing so, we've taken what departments have previously paid for and rolled it up into this line item. Okay. I hope that provides an explanation. Thank you. Councilor Givner. I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Anyone further in the chamber? Anyone online? I, I have a, yep. one question. Sure. Um, so how much was reduced to all the other departments to um, put it into this line? Because if that's what you're saying, that you consolidated it to this, you're saying that we moved $38,000 from other departments and put it into this line, number one. And then number two is, how does this compare to what's going on in the procurement department, your department, uh, Lori, where it was underfunded, the telephone budget, under the same thinking, uh, it was underfunded by 12000 on the, well, we put it all together, but we'll take a wait and see approach to see how it goes, and maybe we'll do a supplemental later. Well, why is this any different? So if you can answer those two questions, it would be helpful. Okay, so I would say the difference is close to the 5,000 because we have a, a plot printer from the planning department that was previously paid for. That's an expensive printer um, that has come over into the lease, into, the, into this line item. I had um, funding in my line item for copier slash lease that is rolled in as well. So that's the first thing. I hope that answers your question, Counselor. The second, so five, so five thousand was moved in. It not. I wouldn't say it's. I would say it was close to that. Uh, okay. Um, and, and, and part of this is also having a buffer because if you were just to say sixty-five minus thirty-eight, your difference is what you have is what the city has to work with for twelve months to accommodate requests that come through the mayor's office. And, and in terms of the phone, um, the phone that I, the, the numbers that I presented to the mayor were accurate and um, based on um, con the contract increase from Crocker Communication off Mass State contract. So it, it was cut. I think it's going to have to come in because these are these are the, the, the phones are are static charges that come through monthly. 
So what I'm just trying to convey is out of this 65, you have to back out 38, and that's just a, that's an up, that's a roundup number. And from the third, you know, and that difference is what we have to work with to accommodate, like I said, the requests from all of the city departments for 12 months concerning hardware. So we can properly, you know, capture what we're purchasing and identify it in the proper line item. This has been, this has been a, a work in progress with the auditor and my office to try to really, you know, capture things throughout the year, um, you know, try to put them in the right proper um, expense lines um, so we can pull up reports and we can see what we're spending. No, thank you very much. That's very helpful. You do a great job, as you know. Um, so in light of the extra 5,000, I'll reduce, I'll make a motion to reduce my proposal by that 5,000 to compensate for that. And I would make a, amend my proposal from an 18 412 reduction to a 13 412 reduction. Mr. Second. Brooks. All right, so motion has been to amend the request from 18,412 to 13,412. That was seconded. Once again, that is 53180 on page 10. Seeing no one further, uh, Councilor Jenny Rivera has joined us. Welcome, Councilor, just to let you know, I, I said I'd never pull your name first. I lied. You did. Uh, <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're the winner tonight. So when we go through the budget, just to let you know, because you just joined us, there's a, been a motion to cut a line item. We're on page 10. Um, it's to cut it by 13412 Clerk will call the roll. If you vote yes, you're voting for the cut. If not, you're voting against it. Jenny Rivera? Yes. Tallman? No. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? Yes. Givner? No. Jordan? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? No. Murphy Rumbaletti? No. Israel Rivera? No. You're missing one. Um, the year, Maldonado? That last I don't think that? he's here. He, he, he was on our. He's online. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't know you were here. Maldonado really Velez? And no. 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 Five, five yeas, seven nays. Well, you vote that does not pass. Anyone else for page 10? Hearing none, off to page 11. Office of the Administrative Assistant to the City Council. Page 12, Office of the City Clerk. <clears throat> that would that also cover 13, which then now off to 14, officer uh, Office of the Register of Voters. None. All right, 15, Conservation Commission. Sixteen, planning and economic development. Councilor, I have two here. Yep, yeah, Councilor Jordan. Yep, yeah, I have two. I have two here. Um, first one is to reduce the planner one uh, position by forty-five thousand. Um, this we've already come to learn from the department head is now covered by the impact funds. So since that was approved, this these funds are no longer needed. I don't think I'll that second one, that. I don't second. think that should be particularly controversial. All right. So motion is to take up on page sixteen five one one zero six and cut it by the full forty five thousand as explained. That was seconded. Anyone further? So, I, yeah, Councillor McGivern. I, I, I think I, I agree with the cut. I understand where it's coming from. I just want to make sure we're on the right, on the right object code. 
because... 51106, planner one. Yeah, but that looks like what was put in for, for the impact fee. Because the salary is higher than the 45000 um, Ask, let's, because the mayor's here. Uh, question be to the mayor, the 45000 was that covered by the impact fee? Mayor, are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Council McGivern's right. So the, the one we're looking at is the planner two, which is the, the planner one's the new role. And if we didn't vote to subsidize uh, or supplement, I'm sorry, supplement the planner two, right? That's where the planner one would be cut. But since we did, the 45,000 will be cut from the current 58,000 that's budgeted for planner two, because it's the planner two that will be doing the marijuana work. So you want us to cut 51109 yeah. by 45,000? Would you prefer that? I mean, we could do either one. What, what do you prefer? So, so we want to make sure that whoever is doing the marijuana work is the one that's receiving the, the funds, right, through uh, payroll. And that's going to be planner two that's doing that job. So since you guys are supporting yeah. to mm -hmm. supplement um, uh, the you know, marijuana work using that alternative revenue source, yeah. then we can subtract 45000 from 58. the current fifty eight. Yep. knowing that the marijuana money is going to cover those hours. <laughs> right, so but, but that would only leave 13000 in the line. That doesn't right. make Right, but remember, the difference is going to be covered through the marijuana funds. That's the, uh, the, the, the supplement. That's what's going to supplement that. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, Councilor. Okay, so I'll amend my proposal, Mr. President, yep. to uh, take 45000 from 51109. Second. Second. Councilor McGivern. If, if it helps, I, I think that's the correct motion. Mm -hmm. I, if I remember correctly, the auditor told us that she separated the uh, impact money for the purposes of the state and that we have to identify how impact money is used. So when this person is working on impact, it would come out of the 45000 the 13000 would be the other duties in the office. All right, so the right. motion, and it was seconded, 51109, Planner Good. 2. Cut the 58,000 by 45,000. Clerk will call the roll. Jenny Rivera. Remember to unmute. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Burley? Yes. Givner? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Murphy Rumbaletti? Yes. Israel Rivera? Yes. 11 yeas. We you vote you approve that cut. Anyone further on page 16? I no. had one more. Uh, Councilor Jordan? Oh, okay. Um, mine is uh, on line 51400 longevity uh, to reduce it by 2000. And uh, here's the backup on that. One is that'll be level funding. That's what we spent in the last two fiscal years in this line. Um, there was never a justification as to why more was needed. And it should be uh, noted that no money, no money was spent out of this in fiscal year 22. They didn't even use the 3000. And so uh, there was no backup as to why to 5,000. So um, I would recommend we keep it at level funding of the 3,000, which as I stated, they didn't even use that this year. So that would be my recommendation on line 51400, reduced by 2,000, please. All right, so motion is to cut 51400 by 2,000. That's longevity, Councilor McGivern. Thank you. Um, if that was correct, I, I, I would go along with the cut, but I'm, I'm looking at the budget and showing that we've already spent $2,100 this year, which is almost halfway to the 5000 So I, I think there's a, a little discrepancy as to fiscal 22 in uh, what we've actually spent this year. Uh, I can yeah. pull up the department uh, report. Um, I'm looking at the budget, Kevin, on, uh, on page 16. What was expended no. 7 2021 through 12 31 21 2100 dollars yeah, yeah but remember that also counts transfers in and out of the department out of in and out of a line item too so not necessarily expended 
Um, but I'll uh, I'll pull it up. But I they didn't spend they didn't spend three thousand. So they certainly don't need five. But I'll I'll go double check it. All right. So while he's doing that, Councilor Anderson Burgos. I just wanted to um, let you know that Jenny reached out to me. She was having um, internet connections um, issues with her internet connection. She'll be back on. Okay. Thank you. And for everyone here and on um, at home, if you get a text that it's not on TV for whatever reason, it may happen tonight simply because there's a water leak next door uh, right around the equipment area. So just in case. Right now everything's working fine, though, from what I was told, in case you get the text. So right now... On the table is cut 2000 from 51400, which is longevity. If there's no further comment, clerk will call the roll. Jenny Rivera? Tolman? No. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? Yes. Gibner? No. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? No. McGee? No. McGivern? No. Murphy Rumbaletti? No. Israel Rivera? No. Eight, three yeas, eight nays. Put your vote, that one does not carry. Anything else on 16? Um, I did want to just say, uh, Mr. President, on that line item, I cannot vouch for the 2100, why it says that in the budget book. Um, but I am looking at the general ledger expense report as of June 6, 2022, for the entire fiscal year. Zero dollars spent out of that line. Zero dollars. Okay. But that's fine. Vote is what it was. Right. We'll yes. increase it by 2000. So 16, 17, moving on to 18, which would be the police department. Uh, Councilor Rivera. Um, I would just like to uh, possibly suggest reducing the numbers of officers from 92 to 87 or 88, mostly because um, over the last several years, they actually haven't reached the actual 92 number. Um, and they're kind of like uh, having the extra fund and transferring it in and out to different accounts to help fund other accounts. And if that's the case, then maybe the other accounts should just be funded to the level that they need to be at. And if they need the money to reach the 92, then they can come back later to ask for the 92. Um, that would just be my uh, motion. So what would your total cut be? A to 87 officers. Yeah, but 90. you have to, so I understand the number of employees, you want to go from 92 to 87, but you have the to math. cut the 5,760,999 by whatever number you're looking to cut it by. I would have to do the mathematics divide, of. Divide 99. All right. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> so, Councillor Rivera is looking second. on page 18, just to get everyone on the same page. Uh, 51107. Mm -hmm. That's a huge um, Mr. President? So, just hold, hold on one second. So, Councillor Rivera, if you're cutting seven positions, if we're doing our math correctly, uh, that would be. Four hundred thirty-eight thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars and eighty-eight cents. There you go. I'll go with so wait, you. Wait. So. <coughs> Hold on. Let's. We're gonna check that number one more time because we're going off the yeah. the cuff here. Actually, because you're only cutting five, not seven, that number is $313,097.77. Thank you. Okay. So is that your motion? 
second. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. So that was seconded under <laughs> discussion. Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we had a talk with the chief when he was in about the uh, patrol officers, and if I remember correctly, the uh, the number of 83 was going to be increased by July by five to six who are in the academy or entering the academy. In that by September 1st, uh, first second of uh, September, he hopes to get the increase up to the up to the 92 itself. Um, it's a it's a good point by Councilor Rivera. These larger salary line items can be moving targets during the course of a year. The the problem is, well, there's two things. One one is, I think there's still one more increase in the in the contract coming up July one, which means that some of the extra money in this line item could be for the increase itself. But two, which is the way I look at these larger line items is we, we have to, if, if you know, we have 83 bodies, 89 bodies, 92 bodies, we have to fund the full 12 months yeah. or we're violating Mass General Law itself and makes it very difficult for the auditor to, uh, to reconcile on, a, on the payroll when the payroll starts coming out every, every two weeks. Um, there would be very little opportunity um, to supplement this until uh, sometime in the fall. And I just want to make sure, uh, the numbers I see are, are what the chief said is what he needed. And uh, I, I don't want to take the chance that we'd uh, not be able to bring some new, very much needed police officers on board. Councilor Rivera. Um, thank you, Mr. McGivern, thank you. Um, so the, he also stated that they have another six officers retiring within the same fiscal year. So technically, it's, the number will go from 83 down six more. So, I mean, you subtract, I think that would be 77 officers once they all start to retire. So in the process, you're going to be adding five to six officers, but you'll be losing another six to seven officers throughout the same fiscal year. So, I mean, you're going to stay at the same level almost of officers that we have now unless we plan on getting 10 officers or 12 officers. So, Councilor McGivern? I, I just, um, I, I know the Chief always t gives us an idea about retirements. Uh, I doubt those retirements were all officers. A good mo usually the officers retiring are superior officers who work, work their way up the ranks over the course of their career. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, two, it's not set in stone. An officer can change their mind about retirement the day that they said they were going to retire and keep on working. So it, it makes it difficult. And you, you have a good point there, Councilor Rivera, but it makes it difficult to cut until we know they actually go out the door. Councilor Vacan. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would note that the timing of people potentially retiring and the new people coming on wouldn't be a perfect match either. And I would also note that in the police budget, it's the only budget where the overtime budget was cut. And to the extent that positions aren't filled, then there will need to be transfers to cover the hours that will be needed to cover for the unfilled positions. And again, I would note this is the only budget that that happened in. So I encourage the counselors to leave the compliment at the 92 that was budgeted and fully explained in the budget here. Thank you. Uh, I know the chief is on, so I do have a question for him because this comes up uh, and is unfortunately forgotten about. Uh, we accepted grant money uh, in order to fund certain positions. And to the chief, if we were to cut these positions, would that be in violation of the grant money we accepted to fill positions and then we'd be in trouble grant wise? Chief, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Um, so your question is, will that affect the grants? I, I don't believe so, no. Okay. So, Councilor Rivera. Um, so, to, to Councillor Vacant's point, I, I, I totally hear the, 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 the ability to be able to transfer the funding in case, because the, 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 over, the overtime is underfunded. 
um, I, I'm with that, I guess. I guess I can vote for it at 92 if the idea is to be transferring some of the funds. I just don't know how if that's good practice in general, right? Um, I, I, would, I would prefer for someone to ask what, for what they need in every single line item that they're at, right? Uh, so if we're not going to fund you the 92 officers and we're funding you 87, then the idea is to be able to give you whatever's left over to fund the overtime line item, right? So that way everything is funded at the level that they should be or where they need more or less for me. But if, if it's gonna be, if it's the will of the body for everyone to v fund 92 officers with the expectation that we're gonna transfer funding later on because we're not gonna fill 92, yeah, I would be amazed if we filled 92. Um, but then I'm cool with that, I guess. Councilor Maldonado Velez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you, Councilor Rivera, for filing this order. Um, I'm definitely in support of it. Um, this is the second biggest um, budget that department budget department that we have in our city. Um, it's over 13 million, and if we were to cut this to 15, it still would be over 13 million. Um, I think, you know, the chief has no problem if it were to get if he needed the budget transfer and needed to get funded for get up to 88 officers, whatever it is, to come back and ask for it later. But the reality is we have been doing it with 83 or so. And, you know, a lot of the conversations that um, we've been having with some officers in different spaces and whatnot is that we need to do policing a little different. Um, and, you know, I, I think having 92, 90, whatever, if, if we've been doing it at 83, I think we need to, instead of just adding more, um, policing, we need to look at it differently. I think cutting these um, would give us the opportunity to start looking at policing in our city a little different. And honestly, I think in conversation with police officers and the chief, I think we're all sort of on the same page. And I think, again, this 315, you know, since I've been on the console, there's been so many grants that have come in. There's been so many transfer items. Again, the chief is very comfortable in, in asking for the money that he needs, and we've been very good with in the support net. So I think cutting this 315 to hopefully give us room to create something else this would be great. So um, that's where I'm at with the 315, why I'm supporting this. Part. Next is Councillor Murphy Rambaletti. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a quick point. Um, I'm probably not going to vote for this cut because I've been looking into this a lot and talking with a lot of different folks. The point that Councilor McGivern just made about how the folks that are retiring are not likely patrol officers, like I can appreciate that point specifically. Um, but I also appreciate what Councilor Rivera is saying um, that this probably isn't great practice no matter what. Um, and I think that's just why it's really important that we do this audit and really take a look at these best practices, are we doing this the right way? And I think this conversation is gonna be super different a year from now. Um, so, but I, I just appreciate everyone's points. Councilor Vacan. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanna point out that we can't add back into the overtime and we did not cut the overtime relative to the police department. And so um, I would support the idea that if we know we need more of it, we would include it, but we just have to address what we have before us now. And to the point that was made that we've been functioning with 83 police officers, um, if you're a ward counselor and you're getting the calls relative to traffic enforcement and the accidents and the speeding and all of the other issues that we've been hearing about, you know that we are very supportive of our police chief increasing that complement of police officers. And I hope he has great success in that <coughs> regard because we do need um, more police officers in our city. Thank you. Councilor Tallman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to remind people that uh, the chief did ask for 95 officers. Uh, the mayor cut it down to uh, 92, and I understand where Council Rivera is coming from, but um, I will not vote for that cut. Um, I believe uh, the chief also stated that we're having an academy here, a police academy in Holyoke, um, and that they do have some uh, number of uh, officers that will be going through that soon. Um, 
and maybe we'll get the number up. I know at one time the mayor said we're trying to get the number higher, so we got a goal to shoot for. And I think, um, you know, with the, the number of calls, it, and as an at-large counselor, I get several calls about traffic enforcement and um, uh, pe people on the, on the street of, uh, enforcing our, our rules and regulations, parking regulations. Um, I think it's good to have the higher number there. And um, as I said, I won't be uh, willing to cut that, uh, those five officers from this line item. Next is Councilor Jordan. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to say that the Chief's doing a fantastic job, working really hard, a lot of experience. I also want to support the fact that he's a new Chief, and I want to give him an opportunity to, to, to really fill these jobs. And I know that's very difficult in the climate uh, in which the police are operating and that you just need to read any newspaper and it'll tell you about there's fewer and fewer people going into the profession, unfortunately, and these are desperately needed individuals uh, to serve the community. I, I hope that he can uh, be given the opportunity to do this. If, Despite all of our best efforts, we're unable to fill these positions consistently, then maybe we take a different approach. But I, I do think the general <coughs> perception here is as I listened in the budget hearing was that, to answer uh, Council Rivera's good point, which is the excess money here will be moved over into overtime ultimately, which we know is probably underfunded by at least $650,000, at least 650. So um, there's not, you know, this is where the money, like probably half of the excess money is gonna come from in the event that the chief is unable to ultimately fill those jobs. So um, in that spirit, I think we should keep the positions at this time. And uh, our community wants these positions filled. I mean, I hear from everybody, more enforcement, more police, uh, not less police. So uh, that message was loud and clear, uh, at least certainly to me. Thank you. Councilor Rivera. Um, just my last point. Um, I, again, I would vote for the 92 if everybody feels like that's what the case, if, if that's the situation works with it, then I guess. Um, just I want to clarify that the new officers doesn't necessarily mean that they would be traffic enforcement because I was told that we don't have traffic enforcement officers, that that is a separate department. So I kind of want to make sure that we understand what we're getting when we're paying, what we're paying for in a sense, right? Because if we want traffic enforcement, then they're gonna come back possibly and ask for more money for traffic enforcement officers, which would be a different department in a, in a sense, right? Um, so to say that the new officers would be doing solely traffic enforcement, I don't think that would be reality in a sense. But again, I, I, if I can take my motion back, I guess, because it looks like we're probably not gonna pass it. <laughs> so. Whatever it is y'all want to do, or we could keep it moving and y'all can fail it, uh, whatever it is. It's however it works. So to the question, you can re, um, take your motion back if you don't want to make the cut. Uh, it was seconded. It was debated. Clerk can call the roll with regards to 51107, which was to cut it by $313,097.77. Do you want to withdraw your motion, Councilor Rivera? Yeah, sure, why not? All right, so the Councilor has withdrawn his motion for 51107. And what was that? Councilor Givner. I was hoping we could get an answer regarding that traffic enforcement um, team, um, Chief Pratt. That's right. So, so what, I missed that, Councilor. Not tonight. Well, um, Councilor just asked, just mentioned that the likelihood that all the new recruits would be going into traffic enforcement sounds unlikely it, since we don't actually have a traffic enforcement um, body or group. So I'm curious so we, as to so with that, that in the works. Yeah, so that one we can follow up with an order to then go to public safety and have the chief come in on that one. This is just for budget in the sense of cutting items? Well, that would be around cutting the item. The, the counselor withdrew his 
his request. I'd like to make a motion to cut two positions from the police department. One of the positions are going to go to traffic enforcement. Okay. All right. So Councilor Givner is asked to cut five one one zero seven by two, which would represent one hundred twenty five thousand two hundred thirty nine dollars in eleven cents. And that was seconded. I heard. Yes. Yeah, second. All right. Anyone on that one? Any more? Councilor McGivern. Just uh, in addition, I won't be redundant. The 92 is not the actual ordinance. If I remember correctly, the actual ordinance is 96. And if you want to reduce the police department, it becomes a dominoes effect. If you're going to re reduce officers, you should do it by ordinance. Um, if, if, if you're talking about what the uh, duties and responsibilities of the positions are. The purpose of the budget is more about the affordability and the paying of the officers and the running of the department is the mayor and the chief that the mayor appoints. Um, I think Chief Pratt just heard and has heard a lot of us say, we'd like the traffic bureau back. All right, so no one further, the clerk will call the roll. If you vote, you'd be cutting from 51107, $125,239.11. Jenny Rivera. Tallman? No. Bacon? No. Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? No. Givner? Yes. Jordan? No. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? No. McGivern? No. Murphy Rambaletti? No. Israel Rivera? Yes. Three yeas, eight nays. Well, your vote that one doesn't pass. Mr. President, can I ask a question? Yeah, Councilor Is Giver. Jenny Rivera online? She, as the update, she had issues with. No, I understand, but what do we do? She was on, but then she lost internet, what have you. So she's trying to get back on. Right. But she has yeah, a right to I record votes. Yeah. She's she's trying to get back now. All right. Okay, so, right. Anyone further with regards to page 1819? I have a couple more for 18. All right, so Councilor Jordan. Okay, I wanted to uh, go over line item uh, five one 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 seven e nine one one dispatchers. I'd like to propose a reduction of 200,000 for this line. Uh, that's based on the following. In FY20, in FY uh, 2020, $377,000 was spent from this line item. In FY21, 299,000 was spent. In FY22, the budget was 389,000 and it was reduced. And uh, after transfers and the current run rate, it's projected to spend 335,000 out of this line. I have no reason why it would be proposed at 558,000 when, as I've explained in the prior three fiscal years, it's never exceeded 377. So it's under, it's overfunded by a solid 200,000, probably more. We're only on pace currently to do 335 for this year. And it hasn't, it didn't even hit 300 the year before. So uh, this is way overfunded. And so I would make a, a motion to re reduce it by 200. So the motion was to to cut five one 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 seven by two hundred thousand. Is there a second? Second. Right. Second. Who is that? Oh. Okay. Councilor Maldonado. Right. Thank you. All right. So with that, Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Mr. President. The um, th this is one of the line items that we have been very fortunate to receive a large um, reimburse grant uh, to pay for dispatchers. Um, and I know it's been running in the area of $200,000 a year. 
It's one of those grants that we must spend the money in order to uh, to, to, to uh, reconcile, in order to take the money from the uh, the pool itself. Um, it, it, I think it's a nightmare when it comes to budgeting, and um, what we've done is one of the reasons we passed an ordinance where the, uh, all departments, but this particular line item, when money is transferred out, when the grant money is used, the chief and mayor have to come back to us during the course of the year to tell us where they're transferring this money out. It's, um, I, I, I can't do all the numbers, Councillor Jardine just did, but I do know that there has been some money uh, spent this year according to the budget book. And I'm sure the auditor is still with us. Um, I also, re and, and I apologize, I also remember, but the chief is here if anybody wants to ask him, that we've had a number of uh, um, replacements last year and COVID replacements uh, for uh, 9 E911 dispatchers. And um, I think at one point, we, things were being done a little bit different where there may not have been as many bodies on board during the course of the, uh, the fiscal year. But I know, I know for a fact that that grant is a reimbursable grant and certainly we don't want to uh, lay off people July 1 because we don't have the money to, to support 12 months of all the dispatchers that we need. Anyone further on this one? Yeah, Mr. President? Yeah, Councilor Jardine. Just, just so people understand where I'm quoting from that I'm just not making numbers out of the clear blue sky that I read the uh, general ledger audit reports of the city. And when I'm quoting numbers on the spend and run rates, that's all coming from the auditor's office, just, just FYI. Uh, secondly, there was a transfer. It was budgeted uh, this past year at 561,000. Somebody, whoever, removed 172,000 from the budget. Um, like I said, there's nowhere near this kind of money being spent out of this line. It's way overfunded. So uh, we, we should fund it at the proper amount that they're using. Anyone further? Okay. Councilor Bartley. Yeah, I, I'd probably support a smaller cut just, just to, to try to, <coughs> but, but at this, I, I think that's a little draconian. And so I, I, I don't want to make a motion to make a, at this point, but why don't we just take the vote and I'll, I'll, if it doesn't well, pass, what would I you might, propose? I'm amenable. Uh, just, I, 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 I support $50,000 cut in this line item. That's, that's oh, as far as I'll second it. Just, just one thing on this one, because this, for clarification, this came up many times in finance, one during my time as well as now uh, Councilor McGivern's time. This is the one where they fund it fully for the 12 positions and then go out and get a grant to then use the grant to then pay for the positions. And then they will take money out of here and move it elsewhere, kind of like over time. The issue is, and I've suggested it time and time again, is to cut, as Councilor Jordan is saying, by the 200000 to represent the grant. The real problem is you might not get the grant. So you have to fund the position, as Councilor McGivern has said, you have to fund the fell 12. And if you want later, back out of it after the grant comes in. We're not always guaranteed the grant will come in as the 200000 we need, or it can come under like the Shannon grant, which has been slowly declining over time. So it's a backwards way of accounting, but we do know that the grant has come in pretty good over the last few years to then help offset the cost. But if you were to cut it and the grant doesn't come in, that's where you lie. So I'm just kind of catching people up on the history <laughs> lesson of this one because I've dealt with it for quite some time. Councilor Barley. I, yeah, I think that's so important what you just said. That's mm -hmm. why I think the, the full cut, which probably for normal budgeting would make a lot of sense, but because of this is kind of a counterintuitive, I think that the uh, uh, a smaller cut, and then when we get to the turn of the calendar into 23, we can, we'll can we certainly have a clearer picture as to what, what our grant prospects are for uh, E911. I think also that we're, we're doing okay in terms of uh, free cash and uh, mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that that'll continue um, for the for, for as long as the mayor's here. And so I thought a fifty thousand dollar cut would 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 a send a message that that we we don't want to have the surplus funds that you can do what you want. 
Uh, but B, it's, it's a little more prudent than $200,000 because just in case what the president said, we don't receive the full grant. So that's my motion. So the motion was to, to amend the 200,000 to cut it to, or make it only a 50, and that was seconded. Any discussion on that one? Yeah, Mr. President? Yep, Councilor Jordan. Um, I appreciate what the points people are trying to make on the grant. On its face, that makes sense, but here's why it doesn't. It, it's like anything else. If we don't get the grant, then they'll have to come in for the supplemental funding later. I mean, by that argument, you should say you already know you're going to spend 900000 on overtime, but yet we're perfectly okay to approve a budget that says two hundred and fifty in overtime, even though we know it's 675000 underfunded, right? But yet we don't bat an eye on that, whereas this, we, we know that this grant is in place. There's no reason to believe we will not get it this year. And what would be the worst case scenario of cutting the 200, that we'd have to fund the 200 on our own later? I mean, it's just leaving slush money there is basically what we're doing. Um, and it'll get transferred to other things, but it won't be spent on E911 dispatchers, which is what we're supposed to be doing with the line item. That's, that's the point of why they're making the cut. Anyone further? Uh, Councilor McGiver. Again, you know, the logic in the grant, we can talk about that forever. Everybody's making good points. The grant money has come in for several years now, and it's the exact money that, you know, originally was proposed to be cut by this. I, I believe the, what's in the budget now supports 12 dispatchers, which I have, haven't heard anybody dispute that we need 12 E911 dispatchers. The first medical response to anyone that calls 911 is a trained person on the telephone with the person who's in an emergency and talking them through this. The, these positions are so incredibly important to the police department. They go without, without the, the limelight. They go without the, uh, the kudos of what they do and what they do in terms of safety in this community. If we cut a line item and it's not 12 months of a salary, a person gets laid off. I do not think we should be laying off dispatchers because the way they do grants don't make sense. Grants come in at some time during the course. This is a grant, Councilor, the president said it, everybody has said it. It's a reimbursable grant and then the money can be used elsewhere. I don't like it, but let's not, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, Mr. President. Councilor uh, Rivera, then hold on, Councilor yeah, Brother. Like, but, I, would, I would just say that to my understanding of the way it, the grant works is that it supplements the funding of the 12 salaries, right? So we, 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 we fund the 12 positions, and they're supposed to supplement the funding or give us the funding for the 12 positions. The problem, I guess, where I hear what Jordan is pointing out is that the 12, when we get the grant, the funding for the 12 positions never kind of comes back to the city. And it, so in a sense, the police department is able to spend it and transfer it however they feel or they seem fit because it's there and it's been allocated in a sense. So there's probably like a lot of grants within the police department that are doing that same, that have that same mechanism where they're supplementing salaries or partial salaries and we're fund, fully funding those salaries. And at the end of the day, the extra grant funding where they get reimbursed goes right back into the, into the police department budget and not into the city budget. The people that are actually kind of supplement, like giving you the money on loan in a sense so that you can go ahead and apply for that grant funding. So we kind of did something similar with, I believe, the planner one or the planner two position, right? But because we know for a fact that we're going to transfer the funding ourselves, we cut it to the exact number that we know that we're going to fund up from. But if they were to apply for a grant, it would be the opposite, right? We would fund it, and then later on, they would have to give us back the money. So in a sense, I kind of hear what Jordan is saying. Like, Councillor Anderson Burgos. Yeah, Councillor McGivern um, hit the nail on the head um, when he said 911 dispatch. And here, here are just some thoughts that when I think about the police department and the proposed budget uh, cuts that we that some people are trying to make, 
is that you, you really need to take into consideration the day and time we're living now. Um, I spend a lot of time in my backyard just for peace of mind, and I can't count in one day how many times I hear police cruisers flying by, ambulance flying, flying by, and when I'm out in the city driving around, whatever, whether I'm you know doing errands or whatever, how many times I see cops, you know, doing their duty. It's this is this is not a time, especially now, not a time to be cutting these departments that are that are over overworked. I, it's just you know my my two cents, but I, I you know long long li- lived my life in this city. And, I, and I've, see, I've seen it at its worst and I've seen it at its best. And right now we're struggling. The officers are struggling. The fire department are struggling. The people in our departments are struggling. We really need to consider how we're gonna cut these budgets or cut this budget, you know? And I don't think the police department is one to be really, you know, fooling around with. Um, that's just my two cents, thanks. Councilor Bartley. Yeah, I, I, I do agree, but I, just want to go to the chair, to, to, to the finance chair, just for a second, because I wasn't, you know, maybe maybe I'm not understanding this, but if, if we, Joe, make a cut that's, so, so the budget is, for, for this one, seems to be slightly in excess of what is needed. And so when I look at the halfway point, I look at $203,000, $204,000. One, I, I just made the, the proposal, and I'll, I'll happily withdraw it. If uh, believe it, just 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 try to shrink it down to, and there's enough funds in there to pay for the 12. But what I heard the finance chair say is that if we don't fully fund this, that cuts will happen immediately. Now I, I've never heard that before, but I, I just want to make sure that that's if that I heard you right. If we make a cut that uh, even a, a slight cut that that layoffs will start, it's not like you're implying layoffs are going to happen. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's what I kind of heard you say. Now, I, I, and the only reason I said 50000 was to try to recognize, yes, we do spend about, uh, it looks like we spent two hundred three, two hundred four thousand for the halfway point of the year, so I'm just figuring it's going to be four hundred six thousand for the whole year, but we yet we budgeted 500 and, wow, I can't even read that. Five, whatever it is, five hundred fifty thousand. So, uh, I thought a fifty thousand dollar cut would still fully fund the E nine one dispatchers, all twelve positions, for the whole year. We still have enough funds for them if we don't get a full grant. However, and then I also said if we don't think we're going to have the funds for the halfway point, uh, halfway point of the year, that we can make a transfer now. In, in, in uh, the mayor would hopefully propose an appropriation in, in, in January. Now, if none of that is what I just said is accurate, fine, I'll withdraw it. But I, I, when I, I just got to get clarification well, relative to, to Joe's, uh, what I thought I heard Joe say. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, Joe. But uh, if you could just explain that, if, if you would, the, uh, if we don't, the fully funding part. Yeah, Mr. President. Yeah, that's right, Gary. Um, that's right, I did, I did say it, but maybe we should hear from, uh, from the auditor. It's if you divide that amount by 12, it's about 46,000, I think, and something you know, change. Yeah, I don't know the exact salary with the uh, the contracts the way they are with the E911 uh, dispatchers themselves. But I but I do stand by what I said about and I said it earlier salary line items are the trickiest to fund because they, they, the mass general laws are very clear that we can't go month to month with a budget. So if you have a, when then you get into the larger departments, whether it was the 92 patrol officers or the 12 dispatchers, the minimum amount of money in this line item on July 1, in order for the auditor to reconcile the payroll as it comes in, has to be enough to cover 12 months. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the way I learned it years ago. Um, if anybody would like, I think the auditor's online with us. Maybe we should hear it from her. Tanya, are you there? I, I am, and Councillor McGivern is right. You cannot, you can't supplement um, your salary lines with a grant. So even if you think you're going to receive a grant, you still have to fully appropriate all positions. 
Um, and they have to be fully funded for the whole year in order for us to maintain that payroll. So if you were to cut the line item and then there wasn't enough money to pay all of those people, we would have to lay them off because you need to appropriate, and that's Mass General Law, you need to appropriate all dollars for all positions. Council Bradley. Yeah, so just through the chair, to time, time. So, time, and so, time, is that is it still Mass General Law that when we make transfers for personal line items and non-personal line items, we're, we're allowed to do that? Because we, we did that several times in the last fiscal year. So, in other words, we, we fully funded, and and then we we took funds out of the personnel line multiple times, and we put it in non-personnel lines. Is is that is that permitted by Mass General Law? It is by vote, by council vote. Okay. Majority. All right, so, I mean, look, I, I don't want to cause any, any disruption in, in, the, in this in vital important. I was just looking for a compromise, so I will gladly withdraw my motion. Councilor is withdrawing his motion on the 50,000. Back to the original, which was 200,000. Councilor Jourdain. Uh, yes, I, I have a few questions. I, I want to test these, these theories that I'm hearing tonight. Um, one is the theory that everything has to be fully funded for all 12 months and it all has to be done up front in the initial budget, which by the way, that's never been done in Holyoke history, but you don't need to leave this own page to test that theory is inaccurate. Uh, you have the second line item down is captain position, three and a half captains. Last I checked, we had four captains. You can't fund if that's true a captain for six months. We're, we're doing that right on this page. How is that legal then? Anyone further? I'll leave, I'll leave that as a rhetorical question. Um, the, the next point is, as far as the, the money goes, we'll appropriate the money if the grant doesn't come through. We have the money either in the general fund or otherwise to do this. These positions, no one's gonna cut any E911 dispatchers, but the fact of the matter is to also test the quote unquote, it all has to be funded up front theory as not accurate. There's transfers out of this line item during the year. In our current fiscal year, they took out $172,000 from the E911 dispatcher line. Well, they didn't wait till, they didn't let that go to free cash. They did it before the end of the fiscal year. So what happened to the whole, well, you gotta fund all of it. And then at some point, you know, we'll reconcile that and it'll go to free cash. Cause that's theory, theoretically what would have to happen. That you would fund it fully for the full year. You would get a grant reimbursement. And then at which point the unspent money would go to free cash, but they're not doing that. They're transferring it out before the fiscal year is even over. So that's totally hypocritical. What we're doing is we're doing the transfer right now. That's the, that's the only difference. So just so there's, there's no legal quandary here whatsoever. I uh, just want to let, that's a red herring. I want to be real crystal clear on that. Um, this, this budget line has not used anywhere near 589,000. As I mentioned, 377, three fiscal years ago, 299, this year 335. Anyone further? So for counting purposes, as explained by Brian Smith, when he was <coughs> here, you have to fully fund the positions. And when the grant comes in, you can then back it out. You cannot cut it up front and then hope that the grant will come in later. The real issue that no one really wants to address is when the grant comes in, the money is not being taken back out to go to free cash. So if you want to do that, file an order. As far as budgeting purposes, get back to the basics, which is from what we learned from Brian Smith and what Tanya has confirmed, you fund for all the positions in order to do the budget. With that, the clerk will call the roll. If you vote yes, you're voting for a cut of 200,000 from 5117. Jenny Rivera? No. Tolman? No. Bacon? Yes. 
Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? No. Givner? No. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? No. McGivern? No. Murphy Rumbaletti? No. Israel Rivera? Yes. Four yays, seven nays. Your vote, that one does not pass. Anyone okay. further for 1819? I do, sir. I have yep. two more on this page. Count your Jordan. Uh, holiday differential, line item 51520. I'd like to propose a reduction of 90,000. Um, the basis for this, the basis for this motion is as follows. Fiscal year 29, 329,000 spent. Fiscal year 21, 348,000 spent. Fiscal year 22, budget was 365 and currently on pace for that. At 480, as proposed, this line is overfunded by at least $95,000, uh, well past uh, the run rate that we're running for this year or any of the prior fiscal years. A 390,000 appropriation to start the year would be more than sufficient for the holiday differential. He said 480, I think he means 480. Yep. We have that code number again? Yep, so. Uh, 51520. Yep, 51520. It's budgeted for not the 480, but the 42729, of which the motion was to cut it by 90,000, and that was seconded. Anyone further on this one? Councilor McGivern. The, uh, the budget we have tells us that they've already exceeded the uh, 345, 767 uh, <coughs> halfway through this uh, fiscal year itself. Um, holiday differentials are contractual. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's been vetted by the auditor, by the chief, and by the people and the mayor who put this budget together. Um, contractual line items, I, I think, are important, but just for that reason, I'm voting no. Anyone further? Hearing none, the clerk will call a roll. If you vote yes, you're voting to cut 90000 from 51520. Jenny Rivera? No. Tallman? No. Bacon? No. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? No. Gibner? No. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? No. McGivern? No. Murphy Rumbaletti? No. Israel Rivera? Yes. Four yeas, eight nays. With your vote, that one does not pass. Councilor Jordan? Yep, uh, last one for this page is uh, Quinbill, line item 51920. I'd like to propose a $17,000 reduction to this line. This is, based, this is based on the following. Fiscal year 22 run rate, $644,000. This number continues to decline with retirements. Uh, Easily, this could be supported to have a $17,000 reduction in this line. Anyone further? Councilor McGivern. Mr. President. Uh, quickly, Mr. President, we've had many discussions about the Quinn Bill, and unfortunately, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts reneged on what was, I think, a 30-year agreement you know, to uh, fund education for uh, police officers. Um, working in the court systems, I, I can tell you the importance of having uh, police officers, those that come in and testify on trials, on motions to suppress, on items that um, pertain to an arrest or an arrest that they were part of, is extremely important. Um, an educated police force makes for a better police force in terms of how they work with the community and how they understand the law itself. Um, I know that our police force is dwindling down. We, the, the city renegotiated right above this line item is what is called the education plan. 
which all new police officers do not get the Quinville. They get a, uh, a flat rate according to what degree that they have or what degree that they achieve while they are police officers. Um, with all due respect to Councilor Jordan on the Quinn bill, I, I vote to keep it so that we can fully fund our most uh, senior officers for what they paid for for re their education during the course of their career. Councilor Anderson Burgos. Nope, sorry, Joe McGivern. Uh, Councilor McGivern stole my shine, so. Councilor <clears throat> Maldonado Velez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm on board with seven, the 17 million cut. Honestly, again, $13 million, second biggest budget in our city books. And we're talking about $17,000 here. $17,000 that, again, Chief Pratt will probably have to come back and ask for this quick line item if it, if it needs to be funded. And we'll gladly do it because we there has not been one line item that we have not funded or we've accepted in the six months that we've been here. $13 million is also not just $13 million when we come to talk about the police department. Let's be really serious and honest here. This is probably the one department that literally gets a couple million dollars in grants every single year. So I'm on the, this is my first year doing this. So this is, I, I appreciate Councilor McGivern, Councilor Jordan, I appreciate all your knowledge as far as like all the budgeting and I'm learning a lot. But I, I have to say yes to this or something. We have to send some sort of message out that, yeah, $13 million on top of the couple million dollars you're going to be getting is a lot for a police department. And we have issues that we're tasking the police department to do that they should not be t being tasked with. And they know this because they, they say this. They're not social workers. They're not um, shelter providers. They're police departments. And we have actual crime that they can't even deal with because we're talking to them with everything else under the sun of the city. So I'm going to say 17000 and I'm on board with Thank you, Councilor Jordan, for making some of these cuts um, or putting some of these motions forward. And this whole contractual thing, again, my first year learning, but yeah, I can't wait to really, really deep dive into it for next year, because yeah, anyways, I'm on board for the 17,000. Anyone for uh, Mr. Pre uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. President. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, and, and, if, it, and if it's any comfort to Councilor Maldonado Velez, it, it took me probably about 10, 12 years before I ever passed a budget cut. So uh, don't, don't hang, hang in there, you know? I'm, I'm the whole world, it's sort of everything reverts. So I'm back to being in the, uh, you know, the small minority on these cuts. So you, you can join me. Um, but as far as the 17,000 goes, th this has nothing to do with Quinbell good, Quinbell bad. This is Quinbell money not needed. Um, we don't need the 17,000 because they're not gonna spend it on this. It's excess money. Isn't that what our job here as city councilors to do the homework? to read the audit reports, to go through the budgets, to see where things are overfunded, and then proposed cuts. So just, eh, just make up numbers, put them in there, fund them anyways, <coughs> even if they didn't spend that much the prior year, and then we'll talk about, oh, well, I support police education and a train for, we're not talking about that. No one is cutting anything other than what they're not spending, okay? They're, spent, they're on pace to spend 644 this year, okay? And the number of people on this Quinbill line keeps going down. So as people are retiring, this number can only go lower because they're phasing this one out and the other line will get bigger because as the new people come in, they're on the other Quinbill program. So why would we, what's the basis to add 17,000 to this line? I don't understand it, but I guess we'll just not spend it. It'll either go to free cash or we'll transfer it out. But why do that? Anyone further? Oh, Councilor McGivern. Well, I, I, for one, trust the auditor, the chief of police, and the mayor that they have calculated their 12 months out. Um, what we don't take into, a, into effect is, yes, there are less people that are qualifying for the Quinn bill, but there are also promotions and salary increases. The mis fortune of when the city and it was before my time i think it was before anybody's time here was that when the quinville was adopted the city chose a percentage rather than a flat rate per uh, per degree the up until a couple of years ago when they renegotiated the education plan contract it was a flat rate despite to my dismay 
in my efforts to try to get the city councilor to stop a contract that made it a percentage in the new education plan, this city, this city council voted in favor of that. The percentages is what causes the problem for this number to fluctuate. Um, Councilor Jordan, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I do, and I do agree that you know the, the money may not be needed, but it looks like the auditor, the mayor, and the chief have calculated out what they think they're gonna need based on promotions, based on salary increases, and a formula that is complicated because it goes by a percentage. Seeing no one further, the clerk will call the roll. If you vote yes, you're voting to cut 51920 by 17. Jenny Rivera? Yes. Tolman? No. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? No. Givner? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? No. Murphy Rumbaletti? Yes. Israel Rivera? Yes. Eight yeas, four nays. With your vote, you approve that one. Anything further on 18? 19. And we'll move on to 20, fire department. Twenty-one. Twenty-two, which would be building codes and inspections. Twenty-three. Twenty-four, actually. 25. Can we add to 25? Unfortunately, no, but I wish we could. 26. 27 schools. Uh, I have Councilor one, Jordan. Yeah, so this came from the budget hearing. Uh, we had a very nice presentation from uh, Receiver Soto. And uh, I'd like to propose a cut to charter school sending tuition in the amount of $336,240 based on the new updated numbers we received from him. Uh, these monies will not need uh, to be spent on this. Second. All right. All right, so motion is to cut 56513 charter school spending tuition by $336,240. That was seconded. Anyone further? To, uh, just to give a little more uh, color commentary on it, um, school leadership confirmed that the total required payment is 103 million one hundred twenty six thousand six hundred and forty five dollars not one oh three four sixty two eight eighty five therefore we can make that reduction anyone further clerk will call roll if you vote yes you're voting for the cut jenny rivera no tolman yes bacon Yes. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Gibner? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? No. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Murphy Rumbaletti? Yes. Israel Rivera? Yes. 11, 10 yeas, one nay. I'm sorry, 10 yeas, two nays. Your vote, you approve that one. Anything else on 27? Off to 28, Office of City Engineer. 29, Department of Public Works, Administration. 
30, Department of Public Works, City Property. 31. 32, Highways and Bridges. Councilor Jordan. I had a couple on this page, Mr. President. Um, first one is laborer, line item 51107. Uh, I'm going to propose a re the reduction of the 37825 for the following reason. This amount has been budgeted for the last two fiscal years, and the amount has never been spent, and the position has never been filled. It's highly unlikely that it'll be filled. And it should be noted that there are already seven budgeted unfilled positions in this department. You'll see uh, the line items above uh, articulate 12 positions. Only six of those are filled and have only been filled for a while. And the other one articulates four positions and only three of those are filled. So there's already seven unfilled jobs. This position continues to remain unfilled, as I've said, it for greater than two years, unfilled. Um, so obviously, if they could find somebody, we'd happily give them the money, but they've already got seven openings. Um, and it should be noted that we did just add, uh, by our, presumably this budget we're approving tonight, three new laborer positions in the parks department that I believe we're also going to now use in the off, uh, you know, I would assume in the non-park years and in the, in the off season, they could be using to supplement some of this too. So there's also three additional positions there. So, um, you know, if they could come up with a, if they could come up with a person, you know, we should fund it. But I mean, how many unfilled positions are we going to have in this department? So um, that, that's why I'm proposing this reduction. Anyone further? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. If you vote yes, you're voting to cut the 37-825. Jenny Rivera? No. Tolman? No. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? No. Gibner? No. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? No. McGee? No. McGivern? No. Murphy Rumbaletti? No. Israel Rivera? No. Two yeas, ten nays. But your vote that one doesn't pass. Okay. The, the other one on this page, Mr. President, is a clothing allowance, line item 51830, proposing a reduction of 1600. Uh, the justification is as follows. Fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22, both only spent $1,325 in each of those two years. Um, this is still the current situation. Uh, we have all these unfilled uh, positions as well, and we should keep it consistent with the run rate that we've had for the prior two fiscal years. There's no reason to increase it by this amount. Uh, we should fund it uh, as we have been in the past with the 1325. So motion is to cut the 1600, is that seconded? Is there a second to? I'll second. And that was seconded. <laughs> Further discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll to cut 1600 from 51830. Jenny Rivera? No. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? No. Givner? Givner? Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? No. McGee? Yes. McGivern? No. Murphy Rumbaletti? No. 
Israel Rivera. No. Four yeas, seven nays. Your vote, that one does not pass. Anything further on 32? Thirty-three. Auto equipment maintenance. Thirty-four. Refuge collection. Thirty-five. Parking facilities. Thirty-six. Board of Health. Thirty-seven as well. Thirty. Uh, Mr. President, yep. I did. I did have something for thirty-seven. Okay, so to thirty-seven. Yeah, it's on dues and sus subscriptions uh, from the budget hearing line item uh, five seven three zero zero. Yep. Uh, it may not seem like much, but uh, propose reducing it by three twenty-five as we had discussed at the budget hearing. He needed $75 for a Mass Live subscription. Originally, it cost more. That was what it was for. So uh, I had discussed that we would cut it by 325, leaving the 75 for the Mass Live subscription. Second. So motion is to cut it by, cut 57300 by $325. Anyone further? Councilor McGiver. If I remember correctly, what our Board of Health Director said was is the Mass Live was the uh, was the minimum of what you know he was looking for in terms of uh, what's already uh, ordered and uh, needs to be paid. But there were a number of periodicals and subscriptions that this department uses, and it's incredible how they've taken us through the pandemic and what they've done with the knowledge they have. And uh, I think for, for a few hundred dollars, um, Sean did an incredible job. And I certainly think if he asked for it, it's something that he'll spend wisely. Anyone further? Uh, Mr. President? Yep, Councilor Jordan. I asked him, and that's what he said he needed it for. So uh, apparently that's what the cost was to actually have a paper subscription, but now they have a virtual subscription. So. Um, that was the hearing. Yeah, Thank you. I, I can confirm that, Councilor Jordan. and I remember I was there. Thank you. Anyone Thank you. further? Clerk will call a roll. If you vote yes, you're voting 325 from 57300. Jenny Rivera? Yes. Tolman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Givner? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? <laughs> no. Murphy Rambaletti? No. Israel Rivera? Yes. Ten yeas, two nays. For your vote, you approve that one. Mr. President. Councilor Talman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Um, on 54221 on that page, um, i like to cut 500. I believe you said that... Um, Originally, that was used for clothing. Um, they do have 1,000 for clothing expense, so I, I'd uh, make a motion to cut 500 from 54221. Second. So supplies, emergency health, 54221 minus 500. That was seconded. Anyone else under discussion? Hearing none. Clerk will call a roll if you vote yes, you're voting to cut the 500. Jenny Rivera? Yes. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Givner? No. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Murphy Rumbaletti? No. Israel Rivera? No. Nine yeas, three nays. Vote your vote, you approve that one. Anything else for 37? 
38 counts on aging. Thirty-nine veteran services. Mr. President, I yep. have one. Councillor Jordan. Um, I'm going to propose a fifty thousand cut to veterans benefit direct line item fifty-seven seven hundred. I'll second that. And and the basis for that is, as we all know, we've been doing many, many transfers out of this line uh, because they haven't had it to give out, unfortunately. Uh, we only spent 189,000 in fiscal year 22. 300,000 should be more than sufficient to start the year. Uh, there were a number of, as I stated, transfers out of this line because it was overfunded. So. I think if we only spent 189 and we budgeted it to start the year at 300, I think that's being, you know, we want to give this money out. I mean, we get actually 75% reimbursement from the state. I wish we could give out more than 350, but it doesn't seem to be working out that way. So um, I think 350 is a little too much to start the year as a, as a placeholder. So I, I think we should find a little something to trim out of here for now. And uh, I would happily give out way more than 350 if we could. Thank you. Councilor Vacan. Thank you, Mr. President. And I just wanna say that um, this is in no way a criticism of the department. I think my understanding is that part of the reason we're not using as much of this funding is that our leadership in our department and our director has been able to access funds through the federal government, which is perhaps more favorable to both the veteran and the city. So um, I think it's a positive situation. Thank you. Anyone further? Councilor McGivern. Um, I, is, is the proposal 50,000? 50,000. 50, um, I understand it and I, and Councilor Drain points out what did happen, although Jesus came into the Finance Committee and explained to us. Unfortunately, he did not come into the budget hearing, nor did he come into the budget hearing last year, if I remember correctly. Both times he had a conflict. What's that? He had a conflict. He wasn't I, no, I understand, but I just, you know, we can't ask questions if someone's not here, so I'll support the cut. Anyone further? Hearing none, the clerk will call a roll if you vote yes. You're voting to cut 50,000 from 57700. Jenny Rivera? No. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? Oh. Bartley? Yes. Gibner? No. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yes. Murphy Rumbaletti? No. Israel Rivera? No. Seven yeas, four nays. Your vote, you approve that one? Five nays. Anything else for 39? <laughs> Off to 40, library. <laughs> 41, Department of Recreation. Forty-two, Department of Parks. Forty-three, Museums and Monuments. Forty-four, War Memorial Commission. Forty-five, Exhibit Hall. 46, debt, principal, and interest. 47, insurance, claims, benefits, travel. 48, wastewater treatment plant. 
Uh, Councilor Jordan. Yep, I have two for this page, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, uh, first one is to line item 52420, repair and maintenance sewers. I'd like to propose a reduction of 6,500 to this line. Uh, the justification uh, is <coughs> as follows. The DPW has never spent more than $600 from this account in the prior three fiscal years. Uh, they have spent zero this fiscal year. Line items should be reduced from 7,500 to 1,000 on the basis that they've never spent more than 1,000. Uh, in fact, I'll, they've never I'll spent second more than 600. That. Okay, so motion is to cut uh, 52420 by 6,500. That was seconded. Anyone else? <laughs> Hearing none, no one online. The clerk will call roll with regards to the 6,500 cut. Jenny Rivera? No. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? No. Bartley? Yes. Givner? No. Jordan? Yes. Maldonado Velez? Yes. McGee? No. McGivern? Yes. Murphy Rambaletti? No. Israel Rivera? Six yeas, six nays. That one no, that can't be pass. right. One, two, Six yeas, five nays. Anything on 48? There was going to be another one. Just what was, what was the total uh, of that one? Uh, it was 6 5. I believe it passed. I, only 11 counselors voted, right? You need seven. You need seven, right? You need seven. You need seven. Oh, you need seven? Oh, okay. Yeah. It was 6 5, I think. Oh, Council Rivera's gone or he, he lost connection or? Yeah, he left. Left. Oh, uh, oh, oh, okay. All right. That's fine. All right. Uh, moving along. Um, next one is line item 53013. Loan origination and admin fees. I'd like to propose a reduction of fifty thousand one hundred and fifty-three dollars to this line. Uh, and the basis is as follows: In fiscal year twenty, in fiscal year twenty-one, and in fiscal twenty-two, three fiscal years in a row, a total of zero dollars has been spent from this line. And yet, once again, it's budgeted for over for fifty thousand dollars. This doesn't make sense to me. You never spend money out of it. We should not fund it. If somehow down the road a justification comes, then we should consider a transfer in. But no money in three fiscal years has been spent out of this line. I'll second that. All right. So that motion is to cut five three zero one three fifty thousand one fifty three. That was seconded, and Councilor Anderson Burgos. Thank you, Mr. President. Has anybody from the water, um, wastewater treatment plant ever discussed why? I mean, I, I'm, I'm understanding 100% what Councilor Jordan is saying. If you're not using it, then why is it there? So has anyone reached out or got any type of communication from the wastewater treatment plant, because that's a very good question. I wish they were here to answer it. I and I'd, hate, I'd hate to move something and, and disrupt any kind of service that they may have planned with it. That's all. Mm -hmm. Councilor McGivern. They, they were at the budget hearings, but the question wasn't asked. That's right. It wasn't. Anyone further? Uh, had, okay, so a follow-up. Sure. Has... In 2021, I, I, I don't recall ever answering the question, but so no city councilor outside of um, Councilor Jordan has ever brought this, you know, brought this up. Uh, so for Councilor Anderson Burgos, you have a question, I think that would be to the auditor, to Tanya, mm -hmm. if there yes, is a please. reasoning for it. Is Tanya still online? You muted? at Jackson Street, they're getting ready to sell the municipal bonds. So once they're sold, we will have these fees and we'll have to pay them. 
So what's happening is the Mass Water Trust every year sends me new uh, loan information, and they sent me one in 2021, and they didn't sell the bonds. They sent it to me in 2022, and this is the information that I received from them. Okay. And it's new, so that's why we've never spent any money out of it before, because I created it just for that loan. Okay, thank you so much for answering that question. I need it. Okay, so Tanya, need it. It, yeah. do, you, do you think they're really gonna actually use it this fiscal year, that you really do need this 50,000, like that number's been calculated and? I'm actually hoping they will sell the bonds because the interest, before the interest rates continue to rise, um, but I can't say for sure now. What, what, what is your preference? Would you prefer that we, cause I mean, I hate to tie up 50 grand on a maybe, is it, cause it sounds I mean, like, I, we, I, I, I was going to say, it sounds like we've been sort of in a holding pattern for a while. Uh, should, I mean, I'm willing to withdraw this if you really think there's a reasonable expectation that this is actually going to happen. But if it's another sort of maybe wait and see, Shouldn't we maybe just come in with a supplemental later? What, what, are you, what are your thoughts? I mean, I wouldn't have put it in the budget if I didn't think it would be, you know, a cost. But I also have no, um, I mean, I, I can't tell you what the Mass Clean Water Trust is going to do either. So, That's, I mean, you can do what you think is best. All right. All right. Next is Councilor Anderson Burgos. So, Councillor Jordan, this uh, through the president to Councillor Jordan. I think um, we'll give them to the next budget. If it's not used, then we're going to completely remove. Uh, I'm on completely on board with you. If if that's the case. Yeah, that's that's up. I think that sounds good. One, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. We'll give them time, but keep us posted on it, Tanya, to let us know if this actually gets used. Maybe we can do a mid-year reduction or transfer out of this later too. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Jordy. Thank you. A yeah. Anyone further for 48? That motion has been withdrawn. To 49. <laughs> I believe that would bring us. Take a to motion to pass the second reading of the fiscal budget. A second. Second. Motion is to pass the second reading. The clerk will call the roll. If you vote yes, you're voting to pass the budget with, with the amendment. amended cuts that were approved. Jenny Rivera? Yes. Tallman? Yes. Bacon? Bacon? Yes. Anderson Burgos? Yes. Bartley? Yes. Givner? Yes. Jordan? No. Maldonado Velez? Yes. Can you just repeat your vote? Yes. McGee? Yes. McGivern? Yeah, yeah, yes. Sorry. Yes. Murphy Rumbaletti? Yes. Ten yeas, one nay. With your vote, you've approved the budget as amended. Motion to adjourn. Motion Second. to adjourn. Uh, total, total cuts were $449,065, roughly. The clerk will send around a sheet, right, Mr. President, of all the motions yep. and yeah. as per, yeah, okay. All right, we, we motion is there and all those in favor, all those opposed, we stand. Aye. 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 Have a good night. Yep. Good night. Yeah, good night. Take good care. Night.